Hello everyone and welcome back to Curtain Up, my monthly series where I catch you up on all things theatre related that have happened in the month. Oh my god, I've really, really lost it on the YouTube game at the moment. As I mentioned in basically every Curtain Up recently, because I started a new job like three months ago, I am now working full time. Yeah, I love it. I have never been this happy in a job before ever. So that's amazing, but that does mean that I cannot make as many YouTube videos as I would like to, which is sad and it does chew me up a bit, but what can you do? I'm hoping that as time goes on and I get into more of a routine with my work and like my life and everything else, I can get back to making more videos. But at the moment that doesn't seem to be the case. So sorry if you miss seeing me and my videos, I apologize. There's not a lot I can do about it at the moment. <laughs> but anyway, if there's one thing that I'm gonna do, it's always gonna be curtain up because I like to do these little recaps and I like to find out what you've been seeing recently. So yeah, that's something that should hopefully <laughs> always continue. So October was a little bit quieter in terms of theater, but still quite a lot. As I say, a lot of work things going on as well, which have eaten up a lot of time, but that's absolutely fine kind of rhyming. But the first show that I saw in October after taking a little holiday to Prague, which was super lovely, I went to see Six the Musical because I am six trash. <laughs> um, I took a friend to go along and see it because that's something I've been really trying to do when I've gone to see Six. I feel like it makes the habit a bit more <laughs> acceptable. But no, I've really enjoyed introducing new people to it. So I took my friend Gemma and I'd said to her actually ages ago, like, probably just after I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, if this show ever comes back to London, you need to see it. So I took her to see it and she absolutely loved it. She's already planning on when she can take her mum and other friends to see it. So success. <laughs> and then after that, I'd booked to go to the cabaret that was happening above the arts that night because Grace Mutt, who is the swing of six, was organizing a charity cabaret and it was on that night. And I was like, oh, perfect, I'm seeing six anyway. So then I can just pop upstairs afterwards. And then my friend Gemma actually picked up a ticket to come with me as well, which was super lovely because she's not really like, she's not a theater friend, she's a friend from university. So it just made me really happy that she wanted to come along as well. And obviously that meant we got to see each other a bit more. So that was really, really lovely. And the cabaret was so good. I'm really proud of Grace because she didn't have that much time to organize it. So yeah, she did really well. And I think they raised just over, I wanna say it was just over a grand, which is amazing. Um, and it was for a refuge, the refuge charity. So all really good stuff, a really like wonderful evening overall. At the end of the next working week, I went up to Hornchurch, which is in zone six. It's quite far out, a bit of a trek. Um, but I went to see a production of Once the Musical that the Queen's Theatre in Hornchurch and the New Wolsey Theatre, I think that's how you say it, in Ipswich were co-producing. I love Once the Musical. I actually don't know how many times I've seen it now. That was probably maybe my eighth or ninth time seeing it because I managed to see it, maybe not that much actually. Seventh or eighth? Mm, I kind of want to count now. <laughs> but I saw it quite a few times in London. I absolutely fell in love with the London production. And I actually flew over to Dublin to see it in the summer of 2015 because I love it. And the show is set in Dublin. So I thought, why not go to Dublin to see it? And it was amazing. And that was the same production, like the London and Dublin one were the same. So this was the first time I'd seen the show where it was like, a new version and I was super scared. There haven't been many shows really that I can think of where I've seen like a completely new production of it that's not associated with the like original creators and blah blah blah. But something I realized about once is that all you really need is an absolutely incredible cast who can sing, act and play loads of musical instruments <laughs> and you're good. So that actually got me thinking that it would be really fascinating to see like a super bare bones production of Once because even though this production was different, 
it took obviously a lot of similar things. So like with the set, for example, in London, oh, one thing I absolutely adored was that the back wall was just covered in like multiple mirrors of like different shapes and sizes. So they had something similar for this. They didn't have the bar that they had in London. In London, you could go on stage pre-show and at interval to get drinks there, which was so much fun. They didn't have that obviously, which I did miss to be honest, because that was such a fun experience. So they took bits of inspiration from here and there, but it got me thinking how amazing would it be to see like a completely like bare set once, like nothing, almost like in a black box. I think that would actually be super interesting as long as you got the lighting right and some like some little uh, tricks with lighting and props, etc. Um, that could be super interesting. So who knows if that'll ever happen, I don't know. But it was fantastic to see this show again. It's one of my faves. I was crying for about 80% of it, um, which is a good sign, I think. <laughs> I don't really get that emotional at shows nowadays, but this one, like my face was genuinely wet with tears. I wasn't like, oh, but it was just tears constantly. It's such a touching show and I have a lot of memories attached to it, like good and bad. So yeah, it was like a night of uh, therapy at the theater and a long journey to and from Hornchurch. <laughs> After that, it was the final show of six for now in London. So I took another friend to go and see it. Final show, a bit overwhelming to take someone to a final show, but it was really wonderful because obviously six is coming back to London. If you hadn't heard, it's coming back from the I want to say the 16th of January. So it was really nice to be at a final show and not feel sad. It was just like a big celebration of what Six has achieved like up to this point and is going to continue to achieve. So that was just really, really fun. I took yeah, a friend from home. So again, not necessarily like she likes theater, but not to the level that I like theater um, and she loved it. And again, is planning to bring people to see it in the new year. And that just makes me so happy. I sat on the front row of the dress circle because by the time I got around to booking the final show, those were like the best seats left. Yeah, I really liked the view actually. They're definitely pricier, but I'd say if you can only see six like once, I'd say those are actually really good seats to go for, even though you're spending a bit more. Um, I think they're probably the priciest seats um, when it comes back, but the view was amazing. And I really liked that I got to fully appreciate all the lighting and choreography, having that not bird's eye view. We weren't like directly on top, but just to be able to see it all a bit more, that was really, really great. So highly recommend. And obviously it was an amazing show and I love six. After that, I went to a new musical theater night at the Pleasance Theater. It was called Composure. I'd never actually been to the Pleasance in London before. I went to the one in Edinburgh while I was at the Fringe um, and I'd been meaning to because it's quite local to me. So that was really fun to finally visit the Pleasance. I didn't realize that the auditorium was as big a space as it is. So that's really good to know. And obviously I love new musical theater and I love finding out more about new shows. So that kind of made sense for me to go to this night of new musical theater. I think this is one of the first times that they've done an event like this. And you could kind of tell it did feel a little bit slapdash in terms of the presentation, like at some of the new musical theater nights, for example, the other palace um, that I've been to, they've given you a sheet with like all the info about the shows that are presenting, who wrote them, what they're about, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there was nothing like that. So it was only if you were lucky and the host remembered to uh, let you know, then that was a bit annoying. Um, but there was one piece that I really, really loved from it and it was the final piece of the night. It was called 42 Balloons and it's actually based on the true story that the film Up was based on. And I didn't actually know that that was a true story, obviously Up. Uh, What's the word? They took liberty with the story, let's say it that way. Obviously that's not exactly what happened. But yeah, I didn't know that even Up was based on some truth. I just presumed it was all made up. But the music was really good from it. They did like a 20 minute piece from like the start of the show and I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm hoping that I will see more of that 
in the future. It was really good. I'll try and link some of their info down below if I can, if there's something out there. Um, but that seems like a very, very new piece. I think that was like one of the first drafts of the show. But that's really exciting to hear that it's already at that stage as it is now. After that, I went up to Wolverhampton to see the Kinky Boots tour. If you don't know, I work on the marketing for Kinky Boots, which is a literal dream come true. I'm having the best time. So it was press night in Wolverhampton, so I popped up there. And that was great because my friend Scott actually works at the Wolverhampton Grand. And my friend Amy was there because it was press night. So it was just such a fun night of working, on like this amazing show, but also being with my friends. Ah, oh, such a like a hat trick of wins. And I'm so enjoying the Kinky Boots tour. Everyone on it is just absolutely fantastic. And I got to see Kai in the role of Lola. So Callum Francis is playing Lola up until, I believe it's the 15th of December. And then Kai is taking over for the rest of the tour. So it was really great to see his Lola before he takes over. And I absolutely loved his portrayal. He was amazing. It was just such a good night. I had so much fun. So yeah, I feel really lucky to be working on that show. Yay! After that, I made a return visit to the other palace. It's been a while, actually. I've not been to the other palace before this. It was like two months, I think, which is actually ages for me. Um, and I went to see Eugenius because it was closing that weekend and... It was meant to transfer to the ambassadors and then an investor pulled out. So sadly that wasn't happening, but I wanted to see it at the other palace anyway, because I prefer the other palace as a venue rather than the ambassadors. <laughs> so obviously I wanted to try and see it there. And I'm so glad that I did. Such a shame that the transfer isn't happening and they couldn't make their like official West End transfer because that show is so full of joy and the new cast members were so good to see. Oh, I'm just really, really upset about the whole situation, but I'm so glad I could see it once more because it really is a show that I've supported for years. And like, I saw it at the Palladium, uh, the 2016 workshop, and I've supported it like throughout that whole time period. Ugh, it just breaks my heart because it, like all the cast and all the crew and they, they thought they were gonna have jobs through like the new year and oh, it just really frustrates me. But as I say, <laughs> ran over. It was super lovely to see them again. Like Dan Buckley is still amazing. Scott Page was just hilarious as always. Laura Baldwin, I cannot wait to see her in more shows because she's such a talent. Rob Houchin was playing the role of Eugene this time around and he was so, so perfect for it. I think he's an amazing actor. Emily Tierney made for a hilarious Sue Pot lady. It was really nice to see her do more of like solid comedy roles. She was so good. Everyone was just so good. So, so happy to see it again and hopefully that won't be the last we see of it. After that, the next thing I did, not a show, Amy and I went to a musical theater brunch at Studio 88. This is like a new bar that's popped up and like literally they're doing everything. So Amy was invited and she took me along because she was a babe. And yeah, so on Sunday, we went to a musical theater brunch. It was a wicked themed takeover brunch. So we had Laura Emmett, uh, Kane, Oliver Parry, and Steph Parry <laughs> performing because they've all like been in Wicked previously. So some super fun performers um, hosted by a drag queen. Obviously we had brunch and it was bottomless like Prosecco or Bloody Marys or a mocktail. We went for Prosecco, obviously. It was a super fun afternoon. It was between like 12 and four. I wasn't invited, so I feel like I can say this bit of like constructive criticism. Um, it was 50 pounds, like if you had to pay for it all. And I feel like I probably wouldn't pay 50 pounds for it. I think if you're in London and you're doing like a couple of shows on a Saturday and then you've got some time before you go home on a Sunday or what have you, and you don't wanna see a Sunday matinee. It's something fun to do, especially if there are performers that you enjoy doing the like takeover and performing, cause they had like good sort of half an hour sets each. So it wasn't just like one song, off you go. But yeah, I think 50 pounds for me is probably a bit, a bit much. But anyway, it was super fun to see Amy and it was fun. I'm just stingy. 
The next day I went to see Twelfth Night at the Young Vic and I did their Lucky Dip tickets for the first time. Lucky Dip at the Young Vic, you pay 10 pounds. When you book, you book them online. Or I think you can book them on the phone as well and probably in person, but I booked them online and you don't know where you're gonna be sat or standing in some cases. So I turned up, I actually didn't have a seat until about 7.28 I think it was, which was a little bit nerve wracking, I must say, but I ended up in a seat, which was great. I think I would have been happy sitting wherever, I just didn't really fancy standing, even though it was a relatively short production. So I ended up sitting on the front row, which was not bad at all. It's uh, for Twelfth Night, they've got a thrust stage. So obviously I would have rather been at the center. I was more to the side of the stage, but it was fine. Still, I had to turn my head like back to see some performers at points, but it wasn't the worst thing ever. I'm not a massive fan of Shakespeare, I have to say, but this is a musical adaptation. It's come from, uh, I believe the public theater, it's come straight from there. And it was fun, like it was a good night, but I think for something like Shakespeare, even if you're doing a musical adaptation for it, it does need to be a bit longer because I know that some people have found that they've missed bits out of the story. I definitely felt a bit confused at points still. I just, I'm not a massive Shakespeare fan, I think. I think that's the main issue, but I have had some of the music stuck in my head and I believe it's now like online. So I'm excited to listen to it again. I thought that Gabrielle Brooks, who plays the main character that I can't remember the name of, um, she was amazing. It was really, really nice to see Natalie do again. And Gerard Carey, who played Malvolio and like fully stole the show. He was the brother in Half a Sixpence. So as soon as he was on stage, I was like, I recognize you, where do I recognize you from? And then I was like, oh, you were in half a sixpence. Oh, this is gonna be good. And it was, he was so funny. So yeah, a good fun night, but I don't think I loved it as much as a lot of people have. And that's fine, because everyone loves different things. The next day I took Amy to see Misty at Trafalgar Studios. I actually really wanted to catch this when it was at the Bush Theatre, and I think it like completely sold out, so I just did not get the chance to see it there. And I was really thrilled when it announced it was transferring to Trafalgar, and then I was even more thrilled when it announced that it was extending, because I have no time at the moment. So if something is extended and I have more time to try and see it, that's amazing. And Amy was down for a course so it worked out perfectly that we could see it then. It was a really really interesting piece. It's a like a spoken word with a musical like a blend of a show and it's by Rinze Ken. It's unlike anything I've seen before so that was so fun to see. If you don't like balloons this is probably not the show for you just a little spoiler but I really liked what he was doing with the whole piece it really got you thinking and discussing it as well because I could hear straight away outside the theatre afterwards like people talking about it and you know that's the best thing when you when you leave a show and there's that discussion immediately that you need to talk about it more you need to dissect it because it's not sort of like a clear-cut piece Misty is all about Arunze's well, Arunze's character, and I think it's just him in the show actually. So let's say Arunze, his area of London and how like gentrification has affected it. So yeah, <sighs> there's a lot of things being dealt with in the show, like gentrification, London as a whole thing, race issues as well. So it's such an interesting piece and I highly recommend seeing it if you can before it finishes. Not only just because of the sort of how it's being done on stage and how different it is. And like as a theater goer, I think, I think you do need to like stretch out of your comfort zone a little bit. And this is definitely a piece that's probably outside of a lot of people's comfort zones, but also the topics being discussed in it. It's so worth a watch. The next show that I saw was the third installment of the Pinter at the Pinter season at the Harold Pinter Theatre. So this one, I've seen the first two already. And this one was, a lot lighter for the most part than if you saw Pinter 1. That was quite um, quite deep 
and a bit depressing. The third one is overall a lot lighter. It's got an incredible cast, like Lee Evans has come out of retirement for it. It's got Tamsin Grieg, it's got Keith Allen, Mira Sayal and Tom Eden and they work together brilliantly. So it's kind of like a sandwich. This is how you describe shows now. But you've got a uh, landscape at the start, which is, it's about a couple and their marriage. So it's a bit sort of deeper. And then there's lots and lots of funny stuff. And then ends on a kind of Alaska, which is where Tamsin Grieg's character has just woken up after a 29 year sleep. Honestly, goals. I'm kidding. Um, I would just love to be able to sleep a bit better at the moment. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a real mix of um, kind of more deeper and tougher subjects mixed with humor. There's a really, really no, I'm not gonna say it, but there's a really funny sketch in the middle with um, Lee, Tom and Keith and it's just so simple, but really, really funny. Yeah, that was really good to see. It's so interesting seeing more of Harold Pinter's work in this kind of season, because there's just so much of it. Like that night was like four or five plays plus sketches. It's just mad. Like to think of someone having that kind of career and making that much stuff, just kind of blows my mind. The next day after that, I love me a busy stagey week. Um, I went to see Wise Children at the Old Vic. So I started off the week at the Young Vic and ended at the Old Vic. That's quite satisfying. So yeah, I went because Todaytix had one of their 15 pound offers, which was great. I really did want to see this because it's been adapted and directed by Emma Rice, who I am a fan of. And yeah, I really want to try and like, sit closer to the stage at the old Vic. I'm trying to find that sweet, sweet spot of where to sit. And I think I just need to keep on going closer because it's such a vast venue. It's really, really weird. Um, I think once I see something a bit closer up, then that'll probably be a winner. I didn't love Wise Children. I think it's partly because I was pretty exhausted at this point of the week. That definitely didn't help, but it was a bit, too, I don't want to say it was a bit too whimsy for me because I did enjoy the aesthetics of it, but I was kind of like taking in the story and this sounds really bad, but I was thinking like, what's the point? I wasn't connecting with it at all. And at a few points I was thinking like, nothing is making me really care for the characters. It felt really weird because that was one of the first times I've been in a theatre watching a show and I've actively thought that and felt that. So I don't know where it missed the mark for me exactly, because there are great performances in it. As I say, I did enjoy the visuals. There was just something about it that wasn't working for me, which is a shame because as I say, I do normally really like Emma Rice's work. I don't think this was the one for me, sadly. And then there might be one more thing this month, but I've not booked it yet, but I feel like I probably will go. Probably gonna go see Mythic at the Charing Cross Theatre because I've heard like pretty good things about it. And sadly it's not selling well at all. Um, it's a new musical. It's obviously inspired by like Greek stories and tales and I'm intrigued. So I'm probably gonna go see that, but I needed to film this video today because I have no other time otherwise. <laughs> That's everything I've been up to in theatre land in this past month. Again, I apologize for the severe lack of videos. I really want to try and get my Edinburgh vlogs out soon. Literally, what is my life? But yeah, let me know what you've been up to in theatre land this month, because I'd love to know what you've been seeing. Let me know in those comments down below, especially if you've been to see any of the shows that I've been to see, because I'd love to know your thoughts on them. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.